good afternoon and uh, deeply grateful to dr baldev raj for having me here today to share my views and experiences of carrying out this msme program of tifac for last about a decade what i will do is given the time constraint i will quickly highlight the context of msmes in our country in general globally what they do for our country in terms of employment generation the constraints the issues the problems they face the model which tifac developed in order to address some of the gaps they face our experiences and further evolution which we have affected in our program so i'll skip some of the slides this is all about tifac i'll skip it in general msmes are the growth engines of virtually all the nations across the globe even in oecd countries they form about 60 to 70% of the employment and 55% of the gdp of course the the criteria for defining an msme is vary from country to country in in somewhere it is annual turnover somewhere it is number of employees somewhere it is a mix of both in our country it is investment in plant and machinery so these are the different criteria in our countries the manufacturing sector msmes are classified as having uh, investment in plant and machinery or 25 lakhs 5 crores and 10 crores micro small and medium and if there is a service sector industry 10 lakhs 2 crores and 5 crores that there's a category is shortly going to be revised by ministry of msme but it's not yet done as i said they are the growth engines of our economy the 37.33% of manufacturing 40% share in direct export we have all gone through these figures since the morning a number of times and uh, plus the contribution in gdp but the point to note here the manufacturing sector of the msme is like their contribution is measly 7% and the services sector is 30 30.5 but the problem again lies with manufacturing sector their contribution is slowly going down and gradually it's a continuous process so uh, as far as for the inclusive growth around 400 made in major manufacturing clusters 6000 artisanal clusters sorry the clock is not running here Space. Huh? Space. so i get that extra time <laughs> so, so around Five, okay. so around 5.10 crores of msmes are there and this is as per the 1415 report the largest employing sector after agriculture 11.7 crore people 21 divided into 21 major industry groups and moreover the rural units occupy more than 45.20% and the women enterprises 13.72 so this gives the perspective the view that why msmes are critical to our inclusive growth for the country now this is the share of msme sector in gdp just the point to note here that the manufacturing sector is gradually going down just just barring the last one uh, second last one and the contribution of services sector is going up now here is the clear cut clear cut differentiation large scale industries 1.5 lakhs in number they generate an employment about 1 crore msmes 5.1 crore number they generate 11.7 crores so their potential in the correct context as a employment generation the shares in gdp is also different one data which i could not include here also shows that the Uh, uh, investment per capita investment per, for per employment generation is much lower in in msmes than in larger industries the scenario which our earlier speakers also uh, said that with gradual passing time cutting tech cutting uh, this cutting edge technologies robotics workforce will be uh, cut down well we have to find an answer now having said that the msmes in our country especially have a technological issues a number of issues which ails them diversity of needs lack of in house r and d 
They have a wafer thin margin and they cannot have their in-house R&D. There's an issue of affordability of costs, technology mismatch. They have to take whatever is available. They can't adopt them. They can't downsize it. The constraints of retrofitting and building human capacity. Again, the issue of cost competitiveness, unit-specific application is there, the product consistency, the quality standards, the availability of assistance, and so on. So this, to sum up, these are the challenges which face Indian MSMEs. One is the knowledge resource. Where is the knowledge resource? Where is the source? Mutual cooperation between the MSMEs are totally missing. There's no confidence. There's no suitable system for technology upgradation. The design support is totally missing. And sir, we had, we had, we, uh, we had also asked for, uh, uh, rather requested an ID for support in one of our clusters. But the, there's a so much mismatch, so much mis mismatch that the absorption capacity is not there in our MSME cluster. And added to that is the resource-based constraint and the marketing support, lack of it rather. Uh, to, to put it in words, there's a weak coupling between the public funded R&D, industrial units and MSME sector. There's a weakness of the systems for ensuring availability. Absence of a strong atomy, academia research industry collaboration and expertise base. Now our program was conceptualized by our former chairman, Dr. R. Chidhambram, and uh, broadly, very broadly on the Silicon Valley experience that why not have a close interaction platform with the, of the MSME cluster with a proximate, competent and uh, willing academic institution, technically, technically competent academic institution proximate to that. What we do is we prepare a platform for interaction, sensitization and comprehensive assessment of technological needs, design of targeted uh, technical interventions, technology intervention plan is prepared. That plan is essentially presented within the cluster for the consonants for their acceptance before it is finalized. Now this is in a nutshell what we do in the flow, in the flow chart. Uh, we stress and we strive to make it, to, to make it a demand driven and not a top driven approach because we, we ask their uh, cooperation, we ask suggestions from them. In fact, the whole, the whole system starts from expression of interest from industry association only. Now, what we have been able to do so far, we have covered 40 MSME clusters, 30 technology gap analysis studies completed. We established two R&D innovation sectors and a host of capacity building and skill development initiatives, skill, skill initiatives, exp exposure meets, and so on. This gives you a glimpse of the clusters covered. This also comes in a map. One was getting too, too crowded. So this is another map. And this is the matching with the, with the proximate uh, uh, this technical institution. This is the matching we, we did. The sense being that in our country, there's a huge latent base of knowledge base available in our academia. But I stress on the word latent because barring a few exceptions, a very few exceptions, most of us academic institutions are confined within the four walls and they are, they are mandated to teach only. They are neither motivated nor incentivized to go out and reach out to the industry association or industries. Some of the case studies I would like to present very briefly if time is running out. This Howrah Foundry cluster was one of our earlier studies, earlier association, 173 operational foundries. I won't go into the details. The number of foundries are going down. They are low value added products, manhole covers and so on. We could rope in Terry, NML and so on and also Jadapur University. What we found very appalling were the 80% of the casting defects was from sand used in the sand castings. And there was no sand testing equipment available with the foundries. So the R&D coupling was essential. What we did, we did all of this, but, prob but probably it can be elaborated later. This van we provided with all the equipments of a sand casting, 
This we provided only the fixed cost. The running cost has been maintained and successfully maintained for the last seven years by Havada Foundry Association itself. Not a PESA goes from TIFAC or any government agency. It's a self-sustainable self model. Now again, there was a design audit. It's, yeah, sorry, there was an energy audit and uh, which found out about the, they are a very inefficient uh, designing of the cupolas. 30% could be saved. We picked up, we picked up one expert from the association there, there itself so that they, they have the mutual confidence. He designed it, implemented it properly and uh, resulted in huge savings. The total cost of the, of the, of the switchover was only 2.5 lakhs. Even in the decreased output in these times, the cost was recovered in about six to seven months. Now, I can go on and on, but probably time will not allow. Let, let, let me come to, come to the conclusions. There was one major drawback, which we also uh, tried to address. The aspect of students' involvement in such was missing. So the whole program was also slightly modified, uh, where internships were provided to, to academic institutions. They were motivated and incentivized to reach out to the nearby clusters in two phases. One, to design, uh, sorry, one, to map out the technological issues, and in second, come back, try to design the, uh, the R&D solutions in a project mode. So we support 30 students for internship for two months in the first phase, and if we find the projects uh, worth it, we fund about three, three projects per, per institution per year. So this is the kind of support we provide from TIFAC, but TIFAC being a very small organization, our, our reach and capacity is uh, limited, so we'll try to leverage it. So, so this, is, this is the support, support structure which we provide. Currently, we have impaneled five different institutes for this scheme across the country. More are in the pipeline, but probably TIFAC alone cannot handle this. We have to handhold with stakeholders who can also motivate and, uh, and, uh, and, and energize uh, the different academic institutions, proximate uh, uh, this industry associations, so that this scheme can go on. And we are currently supporting 150 students only, 30 into 5 but probably a 10,000 students will make a difference in our country. And at least address one crucial part of the uh, missing so far, that is the technical support. Thank you. Now the house is open for questions and answers. Yeah, for, uh, I mean, any, anybody can ask questions. I, my friend is telling Amresh, let us, uh, students uh, <laughs> and ask the questions first. Yeah, uh, so my question was uh, regarding the uh, devices which you had shown, the plastic uh, recycling and other devices. Uh, what I want to know is the, the mindset when the person who developed it, so he must be doing some job somewhere, he must have developed that machine. And then he would have gone back to his job because he needs his bread and butter. And this machine is now given up so that people should manufacture on their own and recycle plastic. So I want to understand how many such people would be there. And is he trying to create, uh, is he means any, any such person who is trying to create such models which are open source, is he trying to also create a sustainable model? Because the example I'm trying to give here is we all know how to make an AC. You can have a table fan, you can put copper wires, you can just put a compressor, but none of us make ACs. We all just buy ACs from companies, that to maybe a standard AC, air conditioner, but we don't make our own ACs. So distributed manufacturing or inclusive manufacturing, we all know on YouTube how to make it. We don't go and do that. We all have been told how to recycle, just put it into a different basket, and there are people who will take care of recycling. If we don't do that, are we going to build our machines at our home? So I want to understand first part is that uh, how is it sustainable as in how are we going to build an economy that it, people are going to do this and uh, is it just one of one of person who was okay in putting his effort to make such a machine going back to his own work and expecting somebody else will keep on building such machines. Okay. 
So, yeah, this does work. Okay, I might not be able to answer all the questions, but I'll, I'll give it a go. Um, so I think in this particular case, I'd really encourage you to look up precious plastics online because um, the guy who set it up, I think he's called Daniel Hackens, he... Um, He's uh, made a lot of videos and he talks about his motivation and, and the, the history of the organisation. And they're, they're really good videos. They're short, they're funny, you know, they're really good to watch. Um, so he um, started the project as a design student. So uh, he, he, he really just saw the problem. I think he, he saw that there was a huge amount of plastic waste lying around. He sees waste as a very, plastic waste as a very valuable resource. So for him, it didn't make any sense that we weren't using it. You know, he's like, there must be a way of using it. So he was, I think, just intrinsically motivated to develop the machines. He doesn't see it as um, a, mo a money-making initiative. Um, it's a very good question about what he does to earn money. I, I'm not entirely sure. He does. Do, he runs the project, so he's very actively involved in doing it. So it's not that he's just designed these machines and gone back to his day job and is expecting other people to take it forward. Um, there's one example where he won an award for his designs, a 10,000 euro um, grant, um, rather than using it to cover his own costs or just, you know, for his, his use, he, he actually gave it away. He, um, he set up a competition online for a machine builder to apply for the money because he's a design student, he can't build the machines. And he gave it to this guy who applied to him to help build the machine. So he's really committed to develop the project. And his vision is that other people set up their own plastic recycling plants using his designs, help improve the designs. As someone said before, it's open source, it's never finished. You know, you can keep improving them. And he's happy if people make, in fact, not just happy, he wants people to make businesses. So he, he doesn't want royalties back. He wants people to set up businesses and earn, earn a livelihood. Question about who's going to do it, I think, is a really good point. Um, and your point about everyone knowing how to make AC has just blown me away. I had no idea, <laughs> so that's fantastic. Um, I think in terms of the people who've done it so far, they're probably enthusiasts. So in the most case, you know, the maker movement as a whole, I think, is at the stage of development where it's um, very energetic. Lots of people are really getting into the ethos of it. But it's also quite narrow. And I think the, the important thing is to try and expand it out beyond just um, a sort of group of um, you know, designers and enthusiasts and technologists to reach mainstream population. But if, if you look at the, um, the website, you can see that the the locations where these um, machines have been made is quite diverse. They're right across the world. And there are some that are very community-oriented, um, community so in, in rural areas, for example. Um, so yeah, I think, I think there's potential there. So yeah, second, can I ask a question? Yeah, uh, so my question is regarding the last talk, which was con con concluded. Uh, so, as it was mentioned, that TIFAC is trying to like link the MSMEs with the academia, and uh, like uh, like in fact, that's a very nice effort. And uh, but as you mentioned, that TIFAC being an uh, organization with, with a limited like capacity, uh, like how how is it that the academia can come forward in taking this uh, uh, initiative forward in a larger way, so that. Right now, you may be like concentrating or interacting with say, seven, eight colleges in different parts of the country. The same can we, how, how, how can the TIFAC, uh, with the leadership and experience which they have right now in this area, uh, means what are they looking for and what is it that the academia can do so that this thing can be taken forward even further? What TIFAC has carried out, it's an experiment and a model. The, as I mentioned, that about 400 major manufacturing clusters are across the country. We first decided why not try it out in at least 10% of the cluster, that's 40, which we have now covered. Try to see what model, how it is received. Our basic objective was to create a win-win model, where no support is, need, is required from the government to push, and uh, the whole relationship can sustain on its own. But to our experience, it's not possible as of now because there is some inertia, a lot of inertia in the system, and momentum is required. That momentum needs a push. We needs to be government. Government needs to give that because there need there is some funds requirement for establishing a platform for repeated meetings, repeated presentations, 
and we have come across numerous clusters like for example Havda Foundry cluster in Jadapur they are not very far 15 kilometers and uh, the Havda Foundry cluster was known as the Sheffield of the East uh, since early 20s last last centuries but Jadapur University people never went across and uh, and saw that cluster similarly and likewise the cluster people also never came 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 across to Jadapur University for some technical support the Baroodpur Surgical uh, Instrument Cluster is hardly 10 kilometers from Jadapur. Mm -hmm. They also never interacted. So they are virtually islands. As I said, in most of our academic institutions, we are mandated to teach, teach, and teach within the four walls. It's, it's not an individual fault. It is the fault of the system. Where unlike in some of the Western models we, uh, we have seen, the funding has to be generated from the project funding which comes from the industry so the association of the industry is a must there but here in india it is not so so barring a few exceptions and there were very few to begin with there were no such associations and even in those institutions where such associations were there the problem and the trick was to find a motivated person if you can identify a real motivated person the job is half done. Right. Otherwise, I don't want to name colleges, it won't be right apt here, mm. but in many of the colleges, despite giving, uh, I mean, iterations, meetings and so on, they never were, ne they were not interested to reach out. Mm. Unless there is a win-win model created, right. that if I provide service to you, you provide me something, it has to be a mutual win-win model. Right. But probably to my mind in our country, that will take still take some time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I would like to add one thing to this. Like as you mentioned, it should be a win-win model. Uh, for example, if uh, like uh, I would take an example of my own college. Like I come from Bits Pilani, so there uh, we are situated in an area which is quite far away from the city, and uh, like a lot of manufacturing work, which can be easily taken up by MSMEs, is absent because we do not have the reach to the, like, those uh, industrial facilities or manufacturing facilities. But the students are very much willing to take up those things. And uh, in fact, uh, some of the private companies, uh, what they do is they appoint some campus ambassadors. So those students who show up the interest and the leadership to take that thing forward, they come up and they start facilitating those things on their own. So I think uh, such type of situations like, uh, a campus ambassador in each each and every college. Like I think there are an, uh, like myself. Like I graduated f f five four or five years ago. I remember that like there are a lot of enthusiastic people, and uh, who who would be ready to take up this this cause and maybe like uh, even if the faculty is not very much involved, the administration is not not very much involved because they have their own requirement. For example, people like in most of the colleges they are making this uh, SAE Baha cars. Okay. So there, again, like we fall into the trap that we are not able to manufacture some of the things, which can be easily be done by MSMEs. Same goes for the like our aerospace industry also. We do not have aerospace department in many of the uh, universities, but whichever few university we have, like if if a person, if a student, or even if a researcher thinks of prototyping something, then such ad adequate facilities do not exist. So like I feel like if we can appoint such type of campus ambassadors. And uh, in fact, for my college, in fact, I can speak about, uh, like I, I can find out some people and like uh, form a hub there and uh, it will thrive for like a long time. So like it's just a suggestion, but uh, I think like, uh, sh shall we try this? Basically, it's a, it's a suggestion about the methodology which we adopt. I can clarify that apart from the first phase, which were top driven because it was a new program, all the successive rounds we had, we had put an all India advertisement mm -hmm. requesting in the uh, intent of uh, letter okay. of intent letter. For, uh, for enlisting in the program from industry associations only, not from the colleges. Mm -hmm. First response we sought through an all India ad is from industry association because we want mm -hmm. to make it demand driven. Right. It's not just sitting in Delhi, Kolkata, or Bombay, we, we mm -hmm. give them by the yeah. This is a prescription you do. Mm -hmm. And then we seek in a second, second thing, we seek response and willingness from the proximate academic institution. Mm -hmm. That's how we try to do the matchmaking. Mm -hmm. Somewhere we succeed, somewhere we fail.
Right. That's how the model goes. But yes, that's a different suggestion which you have given. Yeah, because like the students are the biggest stakeholder in any university. Uh, yes. And there are a lot of people who are actually struggling. In fact, I remember I struggled uh, fabricating some of the things, my friends and so myself. But, but but one thing I'll add, that in the MSME program, we have enlisted so far 40 different academic institutions across the country. Mm -hmm. The five which I cited in the last was only in the internship scheme. Mm -hmm. That's five. But, the, but otherwise, in the regular MSME program, we have jo joined hands with 40 different colleges across the country. 